Some surprising audio recordings have surfaced of a phone conversation nearly a half century ago between President Richard Nixon and future President Ronald Reagan. The recordings were released by the National Archives, and they capture the two men using racist language. Here's White House correspondent Paula Reed. President Richard Nixon recorded himself talking to then California Governor Ronald Reagan in October 1971, the day after the United Nations voted to recognize the People's Republic of China. Reagan had phoned Nixon at the White House to vent his frustration at African delegates who celebrated the vote. And last night, I tell you, to watch that thing on television, that I did. Yeah. To see those, those monkeys from those African countries. Damn them, they're still uncomfortable wearing shoes. <laughs> The Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation said today, if he said that 50 years ago, he shouldn't have, and he would be the first person to apologize. After talking with Reagan, Nixon called Secretary of State William Rogers and adopted Reagan's racist language. He saw these, as he said, these, uh, these cannibals on television last night, and he said, he said they were even wearing shoes, and he says, here, the United States is going to submit its fate. Later that month, Nixon laughed at these comments from his best friend, B.B. Rebozo. You know, that reaction on television was, was proves how they ought to be still hanging from the trees by the tail. <laughs> Even in 1971, that language would have shocked the general public. President Trump has, of course, come under fire for his racist tweets, but he said yesterday he is the least racist person there is in the world. Nora. All right, Paula Reed at the White House. Thank you. Look at those monkeys. Those poor monkeys were kidnapped, stripped of their cultures, and enslaved, beaten, raped, tarred, and feathered on the very roads that they paved. Their ideas and inventions were stolen. They had to work all day for free until their backs ached and feet were swollen. Toiling in those fields, those monkeys displayed resiliency and bravery eventually freed vagrancy laws the convict lease act and those black codes helped to reinvent slavery we created evolutionary charts putting the monkeys below all the human races you know furthest from the whites were all the black faces those little monkeys were once counted as three-fifths of a person they eventually gained the right to vote but that was stifled through intimidation and various forms of political coercion. They weren't allowed to read and write, but some were sneaky and learned to self-educate. So we attacked their self-esteem by making fun of their nose, skin, and hair embedding a deep self-hate. Willie Lynch said put the old monkey against the young, dark skin against the light, and start a gender war. A good master will attack a monkey at its core, get them while they're young and the cycle will continue forevermore. Now the nick monkeys nicknamed their men dog and nigger and women bitch and whore. But what about the social, economic and political inequality? <laughs> and before that the strongholds of tenant farming and sharecropping kept the monkeys in perpetual poverty. Why would we give them credit for the great pyramid, science and medicine? Let's leave their past a mystery. Let's give them the shortest month of the year and dictate how much they celebrate their own history. This is justified. There are inferior counterparts, merely clowns and fools. Besides, monkeys deserve weather books, outdated technology, and dilapidated schools. They're monkeys. They love to juke and jive, eat chicken and watermelon. Wild, hyper-aggressive animals now one of them make supreme athletes and ex-felons. With miseducation, poverty, and one parent, they'll be at a disadvantage at birth. We can preoccupy them with TV, sex, and drugs. They'll never realize their self-worth. Put abortion clinics and liquor stores on every corner to kill their future and enable alcoholics. Then when they get out of line with us, we can call it reverse racism or whatever we want to call it. Make it cool to carry guns, pimp, deal drugs, tell them to get money at any cost. And when push comes to shove, we can stuff them in together and let them kill each other off. The female monkey will struggle to find a decent mate. But the male monkey will have no problem finding the cell mate. Let's use education to 
brainwash and pay off the best of them, they'll be little sellout monkeys and say forget the rest of them. Pay the most talented monkeys well to entertain us. The other little monkeys will put education on the back burner in a futile effort to be famous. Instead of being valuable to the community, they will strive to be rich, popular, and seen. The weak-minded monkeys will judge their self-worth according to a logo on their genes. The monkeys have no fathers. Give them musical icons who promote violence, recklessness, and drug use. Monkey see, monkey do. The monkeys will rob, kill, and engage in drug abuse. The songs will boast about who's the most promiscuous, drunkest, and or highest. Kick the monkeys while they're down by judging their intelligence with tests that are culturally biased. The monkeys' ancestors literally died for their freedom and civil rights. Only if those same ancestors can see them now on the internet, booty shaking and fist fights. You see, these monkeys were once mathematicians, queens, kings, scientists, but they'll never know. Even though we freed their bodies, they're slaves to their own minds wherever they go. Look at those monkeys. Days after President Trump called on lawmakers to find a compromise on immigration reforms, a small bipartisan group of six senators say they've done just that. The agreement was expected to include funding for border security, protections for undocumented immigrants brought to the U.S. as children, and changes to the way the State Department approves visas. But in a private meeting, a proposal to restore protections to immigrants from Haiti, El Salvador, and certain African countries who were until recently protected from deportation reportedly prompted the president to question, why are we having all these people from shithole countries come here? He then suggested that the United States should instead bring more people from countries like Norway, whose prime minister he met on Wednesday. That's the racist element. Norwegians are white. They're Northern Europeans. He was referring earlier in his vulgar comment to Africans and Haitians who are mostly of African descent. Uh, this, these are racist comments. He said things like this before when he talked about Nigerians who won't go back to live in huts. Uh, and he talked about Haitians who bring AIDS to the United States. These are all confirmations of what a lot of people have long suspected, that he harbors racism. Republican Representative Mia Love, a Haitian American, responded on Twitter saying, the president's comments are unkind, divisive, elitist, and fly in the face of our nation's values. This behavior is unacceptable from the leader of our nation. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. It's and not so the first time the president has spoken disparagingly of immigrants, and his spokesperson didn't deny the comments. Certain Washington politicians choose to fight for foreign countries. President Trump will always fight for the American people, he said. President Trump is fighting for permanent solutions that make our country stronger by welcoming those who can contribute to our society, grow our economy, and assimilate into our great nation. The president says he wants a merit-based immigration system, not one based on family connections or a lottery. And his comments suggest he's not yet ready to accept the compromise reached by senators. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, New York. So what's your problem, Alex? I'll show you my problem. I've heard whispers about the financial support your government receives from the drug industry. Well, the irony of this, of course, is that this money, which is in the billions, is coming from your country. You see, you are the major purchaser of our national product, which is, of course, cocaine, cocaine. On one hand, you're saying the United States government is spending millions of dollars to eliminate the flow of drugs onto our streets. At the same time, we are doing business with the very same government that is flooding our streets with cocaine. Mm -hmm. see, see. Let me show you a few of the other characters that are involved in this uh, tragic comedy.
I'm on the border of Bolivia, working for pennies, treated like a slave. The coca fields have to be ready. The spirit of my people is starving, broken and sweaty, dreaming about revolution, looking at my machete. But the workload is too heavy to rise up in arms. And if I ran away, I know they'd probably murder my moms. So I pray to Jesus Cristo when I go to the mission, process the cocaine paste and play my position. Okay, listen, Juan Valdez, just get me my product before we chop off your hands. For workers' misconduct, I got the power to shoot a cop up and not get charged. And it would be sad to see your family in front of a firing squad. So to feed your kids, I need these bricks. 40 tons in total, let me test it indeed. I, shit, this is good. Pass me a tissue and don't worry about them. I paid off the official. Yo, it don't come as a challenge. I'm the son of some of the phallus, elected by my people. The only one on the ballot, born and bred to console with feds. I laugh at fate and assassinate my predecessor to have his place in a third world fashion. State Lock the nation with 90% of the wealth and 10% of the population. A central intelligence agency takes weight faithfully. The finest type of China, white and cocaine you'll see. Honey, I'm home. Never mind when your bank account suddenly grown. It's funny, we're so out of this debt for this money we owe with ya. When have I told you that I had two governments overthrown to keep our son enrolled in a private school and to keep our tummy swollen? Come on, our fucking home was built on a foundation of bloody throats. The hungry stolen of their souls. Of course, this country's running coke. I took a stunning oath to hush the ones who know. The CIA conducts the flow for these young hustlers that lust for gold. I go work in the hood, hit my connect. That's what's really good in supply work to the hood. These shoes fucking crack me up. Scrutinized like we inferior. Petrified when we meet in my area. My dude will shoot till I say so. You got the loot, give me the yay yay. Like ice cubes, so don't play with my yay yo. We won't stop you, you bastards. My street scramblers chop it and bag it. Taking pictures and tapping phones, debating snitches and cracking codes. Fast the cuff or blast the fall on any hustler stacking dough. Just pump the crack a blow, and my overtime is where your taxes go. Or gain your trust, get you the hand weight to us, cause we paid up front on the low with cameras taping you. Getting pop or wait, the prison sentences doomed. Make the collar to leave with two keys out, out the, the evidence room. room with my fame. Truck, boat, or plane, they watching you. Huh. You think you got work? They copping too. We control blocks. They lock countries and own companies. We had nice cars and sneaker money. Now it's players out there talking about they holding. With bunks in their house like they down south with windows open. Your dough ain't long. You wrong. You take shorts and soon. Feds will be up in your mouth like forks and spoons. So enjoy the rush. Live plush off coke bread. Soon you'll be in a cell with me like Jenny Lopez in the school. I was a bully. Now life is fully a joke. I keep a float on a boat for Peruvian coke. Players do favors for governors and tax makers. Fat Quakers smoke crack and sex acts with bad mayors. The walls got ears. You big mouths probably. Not prepared to do years like Javier The story just told is an example of the path that drugs take On their way to every neighborhood in every state in this country It's a lot deeper than the niggas on your block So when they point the finger at you, brother man This is what you gotta tell them I'm not guilty You're the one who's guilty Lawmakers, the politicians, the Colombian drug lords, all you who lobby against making drugs legal, just like you did with alcohol during the prohibition. You're the one who's guilty. I mean, come on, let's kick the ballistics here. Ain't no Uzis made in Harlem. I mean, not one of us in here owns a poppy feed. This thing is bigger than immortal technique. This big business. This is the American way. <laughs> 